This, is, this procedure is called an apicoectomy. It's for the treatment of a cyst around the end of the root of a tooth within the bone. The tooth priorly had a root canal done on it, and um, there was either one of two processes occurring, either a residual bacterium that was present or the seal that was to be created with, from the root canal wasn't complete. Um, what you're seeing me do right now is actually uh, making an incision with the laser in the tissue. Once again, you have to remember that this is the, you're looking at this video under two power magnification approximately. Um, when we get all said and done, um, for a size reference, just to give you a size reference, the end, the silver barrel that you're seeing on the um, laser is a, about the diameter of a standard number two pencil. The laser tip at the end is about the size of the end of a Bic pen. Um, I'm reflecting the tissue after making the incision. Um, where the incision goes right down to the bone level, the osseous level, to the periosteum. And I'm reflecting the periosteum. The total width of that incision is the same width as the um, lateral incisor. Um, the end of that suction, white suction tip is approximately a um, four millimeter diameter. So you're looking at an incision that's approximately six millimeters in width. Right to the tip of the root of the upper left lateral incisor. You're seeing down into the hole where the cyst lies in the bone. You can see it's a relatively bloodless field, clean field. I've got just releasing my tissue for a clean and clean the site. Taking my measurements and taking my feel so I have my landmarks adequately identified. I can feel the tip of the root of the tooth with the probe. Now I'm using the laser to um, clean the surgical site and re remove the injured bone and diseased tissue from the end of the root of the tooth. Actually what you're looking at there is the end of the root of the tooth, if you can see it under greater magnification. Press down a little bit, aren't they? What we're seeing now is the, um, the granulation tissue being removed from the site at the end of the root with the laser. The nice thing about laser is it virtually gives us a sterile surgical site, which is almost unheard of in the mouth since there's all these, all these bacterium present.
This procedure would typically have been done with a drill. The incision would be approximately four times larger. The access opening to the tip of the root would be about twice as large. The um, problem with doing an apicoectomy, in my opinion, with a rotary instrument is because the end of the root of the tooth, when it's removed, and that's the, the um, final part of this procedure, when the rotary instrument passes over the opening of the canal, it can cause the possibility of a fracture to occur the laser not having any moving parts and no vibration attached to it um, doesn't have that possibility. Making the um, preparation at the tip of the root to seal the orifice of the root with a retrograde amalgam. What you don't see, of course, is that the patient is medically compromised. She's re she's has a long list of medication. She's had open heart surgery, and I think she's working on her 11th, 12th, 13th stent by now. Um, she takes a lot of cardiac medication, um, blood thinner. And so to do this procedure without taking her off of her blood thinner and having such a clean surgical site is one of the advantages of the laser because, of course, the more medically compromised the patient is, the better it is not to be invasive. Less medically invasive, the better for the patient. You actually see there the tip of the root and the preparation for the seal. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a piece of Surgicel in the site. The re Surgicel is called gel foam. It's a material that absorbs fluids. We can actually leave it in the, in the tissue and the body will absorb it. It's resorbable. I put it in there so that as I'm creating the seal at the end of the root, um, if I drop any filling material, it actually sticks to the Surgicel and I'll remove it and change it before I suture this site. So now I'm just drying the site with a piece of gauze. And now the next step would be to seal the end of the root with what we call a retrograde filling. I, in this case, in this procedure, I used amalgam. People use other materials successfully. Um, I, I, clinicians have to use what works best in their hand. And um, checking the retrograde, the um, preparation for the seal, cleaning it out with of any free of, freeing of any debris before I fill it. Actually, looking at the tip of the root there, trying it once again. Important the seals being placed in the end of the root. I'm going to make sure I have a dry field. Condensing my seal. 
And it's so small, I'm using the end of a explorer to smell it. I my seal. And the nerve canal, the reason I really never really know why these cysts develop around the end of a root of the tooth and neat requiring a root canal, apicoectomy, um, until I get in there and then I have a good sense of it. And in this case, I did find that there was a lack of a seal. Some of these teeth have torturous canals in them and creating a seal from the conventional through a conventional process sometimes is not possible. In this woman's case, we didn't want to lose her bridge work in the front, so to try to go back and gain conventional access to the tooth wasn't realistic. Just cleaning off the excess um, sealing, sealing material at the tip of the root. And this video was shot about um, in 2007. I just saw this patient about a week ago. She's doing extremely well, no residual from this area. Bridge works performing well. Very pleasant lady. I always feel bad for people that are, have tough medical circumstances, and of course they, she didn't choose hers, and just luck of the genetic pool. Smoothing the filling material. It always adds a different dimension to our situation when we're working on people that have medical complexities, but it's not, can't, not her fault. Nothing she can do about it. I'm suturing the tissue closed. The total width of that incision um, is about the width of a number two pencil. It's about, and um, honestly, um, the lip, when it falls down, this incision would close naturally by itself. It really doesn't require a suture. But I put a, put a resorbable suture in it anyway because I know how people are curious. And they like to lift their lip and look at the surgery sites and see how they're going along and coming along. And I don't want them to reopen it because that just causes scar tissue to form. And one of the beautiful things about the laser is I don't get um, the scar tissue formation that you do with a scalpel. So when you look back at these things later on, the coloration of the tissue is the same. You can't find the incision. Um, incisions are just disappear in about six weeks time you can't find them and that's because the number of cell layers disrupted and by the laser to make the incision is much less than what a scalpel would be plus the healing process of a laser incision is very different than one made by a scalpel a lot of times People, clinicians, the first time they see a laser surgery, a couple of days after the surgery, they're not sure what they're looking at because it looks so very different than what's done with a scalpel. The amount of inflammation, the amount of swelling, the amount of tra blunt trauma to tissue is very different than a, what you'll see with a scalpel. Well, think of it. Would you want to have your eye surgery done with a, an X-Acto knife? A scalpel? Or do you think you want your eye surgery done with a laser? Mm, 
think I want the laser if I had a choice.